So our topic today is uh, dictators throughout history. Uh, and this is our knowledge question. Uh, to what extent does communism result in a totalitarian dictatorship? So uh, totalitarian dictatorship is um, basically when one person rules the whole of the government body um, and all of their subjects as well. So our main example, our main real life situation today is going to be Joseph Stalin and what makes him a good, di uh, what makes him a dictator. So a bit of background, the USSR before Stalin rose to power was led by Lenin and uh, Lenin rose from a, the Bolshevik party which was the, not necessarily the winning party but the party that took uh, over uh, the government. And uh, after Lenin died, um, he had made a testament that said that uh, Stalin wouldn't be a good leader. So Stalin uh, used his manipulative skills to basically hide that testament and go into power. Because with, if people had read that testament, he would have never gone into power. And then what made him a dictator is um, the actions that he took over the years. Um, so the, the, the USSR was living in fear and to basically kill off his enemies inside the country and outside, he used purges, which is basically killing anyone who's against uh, you know, what you believe. And he sent spies and, you know, if you wanted to survive in that dictatorship, you had to be good at not being a traitor <laughs> or like at hiding it at least. And that's how uh, Stalin gets his dictator title. And um, to conclude even more, there's a sh we're gonna show you two minutes about Stalin. <laughs> In terms of ruthlessness, uh, bloodlust, Stalin remains one of the greatest villains of the 20th century. Yosef Jukashvili was born on December 18, 1879. He later changed his name to Stalin, meaning man of steel. Stalin had a very harsh childhood in terms of poverty. And he had a tough life as a young man was very quickly attracted to radical movements and causes. Between 1902 and 1913, Stalin was imprisoned eight times by the Russian secret police. Stalin's rise to power started after the Russian Revolution of 1917, when the Bolsheviks deposed the Tsar and created a communist society. Lenin died in 1924, and there was a big struggle about the succession of Lenin. Stalin eventually took over in a very complex maneuver that really showed his master skills as a manipulator of men. Under Stalin, Russia became the second largest uh, industrial economy in the world. It was all planned economies, five-year plans, and if you didn't play by his rules, you went off to a labor camp, and, or you were summarily executed in, in some fashion. Three million kulaks died as a result of Stalin's policies in the early 1930s. Now, he did increase the amount of food that was being produced, but at what cost? During what many historians term Stalin's reign of terror, no one was safe from his ambition. His forced industrialization led to countless millions of deaths and the worst man-made famine in human history. Just before World War II, So that basically, you know, all, you saw all the people starving, you saw the harsh conditions, that's what a dictator would do. So our first development, development um, our area of knowledge is history. So the claim is dictators often emerge out of the flaws of communism as known from history. Um, we have the, our real life situation here is Stalin. We have another one, which is Fidel Castro, and also Mao Zedong. And um, 
the counterclaim to that is some countries still live under communism today and are fine. For example, China has still quite strong communist roots, but they don't necessarily have a dictator. Um, our way of knowing is, um, is uh, from reasoning, because dictators rise to power because of their propositions uh, are based on reasonings of, on the current situations. So people, you know, they, they don't really know that person is going to be a monster later on. They, they are usually desperate because the economy is horrible or, um, or the, the politicians are corrupt. So Stalin was a good, a good choice based and he, he came up with some good ideas that the people liked. Uh, the, the counter claim to that way of knowing is that they use propaganda to mani manipulate the people through sense perception. So in every totalitarian dictatorship, you can see um, posters and, you know, the government will spend a, a ton of money trying to brainwash its, uh, its people into thinking that leader is the right leader. So here is our second real life example. Um, using the dictator Mao Zedong. Um, he was the dictator of China between 1949 and 1976 when he died. And um, he took over from a civil war, when there was a civil war taking place and he took over at the end of that. And during that civil war, China was under a communist rule. Um, and he was also a ruthless dictator like uh, Stalin, who we mentioned earlier on. Um, he would kill any of his oppositions also. <coughs> so, the area of knowledge here that we're using is this human sciences. Um, so, here's our claim. The human sciences show that despite what is said, history keeps repeating because of human behaviour. So, this is kind of talking about how humans almost make the same mistakes. Uh, even though dictators do horrible things, we continue to put dictators into power. And then the counter came, show, says most countries that have already been under communism rule have not gone back to it. So Russia was obviously led by Stalin, as we mentioned, uh, at the start of the 19th century, and they haven't gone back to communism since. And then our ways of knowing, uh, we talk about use memory. Uh, veterans or survivors of the era of Stalin claim that through memory, the hardship of communism, which helps us build history through sources. Uh, so that was our claim, and then the counterclaim, these vet veterans' perception of what happened back then may be altered because of manipulation or propaganda. So our counterclaim kind of shows that the, the sources that they give us might not be completely correct because of propaganda at the time, uh, kind of changing their opinion on it. Um, and also all the, the stuff they hear about it today, about it not being, about it being bad, the, the communism rule. Well. So, as we've learned from the Arab knowledge of history, um, communism almost always leads, actually always leads to a dictatorship. And, um, but the dictatorships vary because, for example, Stalin uh, was ruthless, Mao was ruthless, which means, you know, they didn't care how many people they had to kill to keep that socialist and communist environment. But, for example, there's different reasons why they came to power. So Stalin just seemed like the right guy, and um, Fidel Castro just took over because the economy was doing horrible and he just he just came in with communism and the the younger politicians seemed to you know they, they liked they enjoyed what he what he proposed and then later on he ended up being a dictator which he did less horrible crimes than Stalin and Mao but you know we can't really measure 
uh, the horrors that these dictators do. Yeah. Thank you for this interpretation.